Hi everybody, this is Gavin the Builder. Today I'm just going to be doing a quick rundown of the command blocks and uh, how to use command blocks and kind of give you an idea of uh, command blocks. I set up kind of an obstacle course so you can see how I use them. Uh, currently I've thrown a couple command blocks on my vanilla server. Uh, kind of make the game a little bit interesting, uh, more fun and a little bit more stable. Uh, for the first part, you need to go into Server Properties and enable Command Blocks set to True. And then uh, once you do that, you can edit Command Blocks. If you're just playing single player, you uh, can throw Command Blocks down anytime you want. Uh, first thing you have to know, though, is you have to be in Creative Mode, which I'm in. And this is command for that. I'm going to put all the commands in the description. And I'm also going to put a link to the IDs. Uh, for items so you can give people things. Next thing you need to do is get a command block which is just the slash give at this targets the nearest player and 137 is the ID for the command block. So click on that gives me command block. So pretty simple. Next thing to run my obstacle course I'm just going to throw myself back into survival which is slash game mode s at the nearest player you can set this to anything, so if this was C, it'd be creative, and if it was A, it'd be adventure mode. But uh, I don't really see the point of adventure mode. Uh, so first thing, I throw a command block here. This is always really cool. If you have a town, you can um, throw a command block at the beginning, set it up with some redstone. Uh, this is just going to tell me, or tell the nearest player, uh, let's get this party started. So let's get the tutorial going and it just whispers to you because it's just a regular tell command. Next thing is, I saw this once and I thought it was pretty cool. This is the say at the nearest player, would you like to buy some melons? Uh, somebody just set up a command block at the beginning of their store and you just walk over it and he's talking to you and asks you if you want to buy some melons. Obviously he's a farmer so he doesn't really sell any melons but it's kind of neat. It gives a little player interaction uh, lets you uh, really kind of create an environment. If you're into building towns that are somewhat realistic, you could do that when they go into a shop. Okay, next is uh, the me command. Uh, me, someone's pressing my buttons. Unfortunately, it doesn't make the player say it, it makes the command block say it. So it comes out command block says someone is pressing my buttons. Uh, next is I threw a command block underneath these pressure plates. So when you walk over the pressure plates, this guy says it's not safe to glow in alone. It's another give command and uh, gives the nearest player 275. Ooh, what mystical object is that? It's just an axe. Boom. You don't want to give your players anything too complicated, otherwise the game wouldn't be fun for them. Next is clearing out your inventory. This is always good. You can do it in tandem with the give command. So if you want to clear out what everything that somebody has in their inventory uh, before you give them an item in an uh, adventure map, they just click that and it removed all four of the items that I, were, I was holding. So now I'm, I don't have anything. It will take armor, so if they have really nice armor, you might warn them. Or uh, I guess I would defeat the purpose if you warned them. Uh, next is if you're doing an adventure map and you're trying to get to the other side of an obstacle and you want them to hunt for a button or a command or, you know, there's some trick to it. You can always set up a command block which uh, teleports people to a certain place. This is also good for um, uh, creative super flat maps. Uh, I have command blocks that transport me to different places of the maps where I'm working on different things. So click on that and it transports me to the other side. And now that I'm on the other side, I can get some XP. So this is going to give me experience points. It's going to give me 10 levels to the nearest player. So I click that and I get 10 points every time I click it. Yeah, I don't really need all that uh, XP, so this is going to take it away. Same thing, just uh, with negative levels. So this takes away 100 experience points. All right, so next one is the weather. Uh, we're going to set it to rainy. It's just weather at rain. So that's done. Now, now that it's raining, I might as well make it thunder. So this is going to be thunder, and then I throw in a duration, which is 5,000. Uh, comes out to about five minutes of thunder. 
So click that, and I don't want to wait around for lightning, but just believe me, it will start to happen. And then the last one is weather clear. Uh, since rain is kind of a nuisance when you're doing a video, I just set it clear for the next uh, 24 minutes, which is about a day in Minecraft. So click that. And then it's midday, so we're going to set the time to zero, so it's going to be morning again, so I don't run out of sunlight while I'm making this video. Uh, next is turn off tile drops. So these are the game rule commands, and uh, the game rules change an aspect of the game, which, uh, you know, players, players, you know, they have mixed feelings about uh, turning off drops is super annoying, but it would be really useful in an adventure map where you don't want your players to just collect a bunch of blocks and use that to scale a wall that they should be trying to figure out. So basically it works like this. When you, you know, normally when you hit something, uh, drops a drops the item and you can come pick them up. But if you turn this off, now when you click it, it just destroys it. It's like being in creative mode, but I'm still in survival. Uh, next one is uh, turn off mob uh, griefing, which is this command game rule, mob griefing false. So now that it's turned off, uh, mobs that normally grief, like the creeper, will no longer do that. Obviously blew up and he didn't destroy the ground. Uh, also withers won't destroy anything when they're shooting at you. Uh, they'll, if you build them a box, they'll essentially be trapped in it, so it's a lot easier to kill them because uh, they can't you know, blow anything up around them. And then Endermen don't steal blocks. So that's always nice. Uh, next one is turn off spire, fire spread, which I already, I guess I'd push the button, but it's off. Unfortunately, when lightning happens, you'll get these fire uh, blocks that will just stay lit forever. And, but there's kind of a benefit to them. You can you know, always turn, run around your city and turn them off. They're not going to spread, but they're never going to go out. So these will stay lit as long as uh, the fire ticks are never happen. Unfortunately, if you have a pen of animals and lightning happens nearby, it, and animals will eventually walk into them and, and all die. Sorry, little buddy. Don't worry, it's for science. Now, mob drops. Uh, basically, these turns off mob drops, zombies won't drop anything, any of the mobs won't drop anything, so if you're in adventure mode and you don't want your players to get bones or uh, magical enchanted swords from zombies and stuff, then you can always turn that off. Uh, keep your inventory after you die. Okay, so I turn it on, uh, keep inventory, set it to true, and now when I kill myself, I keep all my stuff. I don't drop anything, which is cheap because the game is about dropping all your stuff and having zombies take it and then you have to go get it. But if your players don't like it, you can always turn it off. Or if you're doing an adventure map where it would destroy the entire game if they died once, uh, you might want to turn that off. Um, mobs stop spawning. Uh, basically, if you look, I have no slimes. I have no slimes, and that's because I turned this off. Uh, slimes are pretty annoying when you're just trying, you know, when you're on super flat and you're just trying to make a video. So I turned those off a while ago. Uh, next one, uh, turn command blocks off. Obviously, if you don't want your players to use them anymore or if they're being exploited on your server, you can just turn them off. But unfortunately, uh, People can just make another command block and turn them back on. It's not, you know, foolproof. So, uh, but if there's a part in your adventure map where you just need them disabled for a while, you can always just turn them off really quick. And uh, if you're on a vanilla server and you're the only person OP'd, you can just turn them off that way too. So that was my little tutorial. I hope it was of use. Uh, all the commands are in the description and a link to the block IDs. And I hope to do another one of these. So thanks for watching.